So I know that you're working not only to bring down these, uh, these monuments uh, to uh, white supremacy, but also to remember the history of people like uh, Alan Brooks, uh, who in 1910 was lynched right here in Dallas, Texas, yes. at the corner of Ackard yes. and Ma Elm? Main. Mm -hmm. uh, Main, uh -huh. Ackard and Main Street. Mm -hmm. Say more about that story and about why you think it's important that all Dallas not forget that, but actually remember it and recognize it in some public way. Well, it's, it's, a, it's a horrific story of a domestic worker who has served families off of Pearl Street for years mm -hmm. without incident, who a young white girl goes missing, mm -hmm. as is reported, and when they find her, they find her with him. Mm -hmm. Now notice that there's nothing in the story that they find them in any type of inappropriate act. Right. But the assumption is because she was missing and is found with him, there must have been something untoward happening. Mm -hmm. He's arrested, he's held, and on the day of his initial trial, a mob breaks in, tie a noose around his neck, pull him out of the second floor window. Red courthouse. Red courthouse. Downtown. He falls on his head. Historians debate whether that fall actually killed him or not. We don't know, maybe just knocked him unconscious. But he's dragged literally on the ground for half a mile. During the dragging, the noose breaks. They re-noose him, if you will, mm -hmm. drag him, and he's lynched then at the corner of Maine and Ackard before a crowd of several thousands. It's about estimates between five and 8,000 people mm -hmm. come to see this man as he is hung. His body is taken down. Now, another part of the history is that the mob is so rabid in their desire to see black blood that they have to shut down the city because the mob then shifts its attention to uh, the railroad, to trains, and they're looking to pull off any black person from that train and lynch them as well. So it lets you know that there's something greater happening here. The reason this is important is that the picture of the lynching is made into a postcard wow. that is mailed all across the world as an image of Dallas. Right. And so really there's not been any other image that has gone as expansive across the world as an image of Dallas alone right. as was that postcard at that time. Right. And we need to reclaim, if you will, that space, yes. not only in memory of Alan Brooks and many others who've fallen, but to reclaim that space as a way we don't want to return to. It, it seems that in Dallas we have a way of wanting always to move on. Uh, the, the, the call to heal and to be a city for everyone though is at times a call that is necessary and that is to remember and reflect and this is part of our biblical religion isn't it? Absolutely. I mean uh, we, we can't be healed uh, we can't have a sense of forgiveness and reconciliation without a sense of confession and repentance. And so there, there is an important public sense of, of this uh, vital need for us to face our history, uh, not so that we'll wallow in it, not so that we'll uh, simply uh, give recognition, but so that we we will acknowledge that we are the heirs of this and, and, and we're going to determine that we won't live that way again. And one of my favorite quotes from Dr. King is that true peace is not merely the absence of tension, it's the presence of justice. Nice. And sometimes the tension serves as a, a, a navigator mm -hmm. towards the peace you ultimately seek. You have to allow that to guide you into a greater peace, a truer peace for all people, but it can't get there uh, accidentally, mm -hmm. it has to be uh, steps taken intentionally to heal and to restore.